sorry, one use for the home computer then, and all thanks to the instructions it got from one of these, an audio cassette. And that's how the vast majority of the quarter of a million plus home computers are programmed to do whatever you want. Okay, now the coded instructions on those cassettes are quite complicated, but they can be reduced to a series of bleeps. So, in theory, it ought to be possible to broadcast a computer program. And we're going to try it. So, if you're one of the quarter of a million people with a home computer like this one, or one like this, then you'll be able to join in. On this tape, we've recorded a program. And we've used a professional tape recorder rather than a cassette to ensure the very highest quality. Ideally, you should use a direct connection from the audio outlet of your television, which will be marked either earphone or hi-fi. And it should be connected to the input of your cassette recorder. Okay, Kieran, ready? You're ready. Right. Well, get ready at home then, because we're about to try it. So, Sue and everyone at home, start recording now. OK, Kieran, I've got it loaded up. I'm You've not sure it. what's going to happen here. Have we got a result? Well, it says a few things on the screen. Let's try and run it. Ah, well, I've obviously made an error here. It says error, but it's even misspelt that. And that's something we've all recognised. We all recognise the failure of a cassette tape. It either comes up as error or it doesn't load in properly or it comes to the end and it re winds and it's basically all over and done with you go to run the program and there's nothing there and this is familiar for anybody who used cassette tapes through the late 70s and early 80s but there is a different way today we're going to talk about this again well not quite this it's one of its cousins this one was for the MSX which we um, reviewed a little while ago and um, I was quite pleased with it. I thought it was a great piece of design. It had been well thought out and it's very reliable. And the thing that made it stand out was its design. Now, I bought one previously from the same company, from You Make Robots, and um, I thought I'll give it a go because they seem to be slightly different in the way they think and their designs are, which, which is great because, you know, it's we don't always need a black box with a screen on it we need sometimes we need something slightly different just to you know make it feel like it was designed around the computer itself now the previous one i had was for the m700 which actually was designed to fit where the actual cassette unit went which was great because it fit really well and it worked really well and i was very happy with it you know, um, I said the colour was a little off, but that really didn't matter because, you know, even Commodore didn't get its colours consistent right across the range when they built peripherals and disk drives, etc. And with the MSX one, I thought it was a really, really good design, piece of design. And um, it's something that, you know, you'd be quite happy to use on a daily basis. Since doing these videos, the designer has sent me a couple more and um, one of them is for an acorn electron based around the same kind of premise as the msx one which is a nice unit anyway but he's got some detailing in there which is really nice but i'm going to cover that one separately because it kind of used or oh, it's designed to be used in a slightly different way um nothing over the top but it's worth doing a separate piece about it and um the next one he, he included in the package uh, was for this, the Sinclair Spectrum Plus. Now, any of you who have seen my video previously um, about the Spectrum Plus and repairing it um, would have seen that this machine here came from a pile of bits. It was used in a few videos for a dead keyboard, uh, ULA, speaker, and so on. It had a lot of issues, this machine, including uh, power coil, etc. So the machine's now running, and um, I'm guessing he must have seen one of those videos related to this and decided that, you know, it would be nice to send me one because I didn't have to do reviews on his um, cassette drives or his SD drives. And um, 
but at the end of the day I thought it was interesting enough for people out there to kind of think or use or buy for their own machines so he sent me something as you can see it's slightly different on the side of this machine it looks a little QL-esque and as you see the normal Spectrum Plus finishes here which is this line here and on the side we have what could have possibly been the ZX micro drives on a, a QL or something similar or something that Sinclair may have designed into the machine if he was going to take the plus on his next step and um, it looks quite nice it's um, integrated into the machine which I really liked and uh, again it's another design piece which um, stands out from the crowd and it makes the machine look more integrated more of a natural unit rather than you know little bits and pieces like black boxes or red ones or whatever color you're going to find sort of hanging out the back of it and um, if you're really into your you know zx spectrums and your classic machines we kind of like them to look as if it was part of the factory so we're going to take a look at this and we're going to see how it works and what the options are because he was kind enough to send me these so let's find out if it's good or it's bad or indifferent so let's have a look as you can see that uh, it's a standalone unit it's not a unit that um, is kind of clunkily sort of fixed onto the side of a, a Sinclair Spectrum this is what I like about the products that um, are being produced for you know retro machines there's a lot of thought going into them and looking at this this is the product here you can see exactly how it's designed it's designed to look like the um, spectrum itself so it's designed to match as close as possible now the little flat plate here are either on the 128 version which is longer and the 48 version which is slightly shorter it actually screws into the case itself and becomes a rigid unit so if you have the feet up on the case then basically it's um, going to work it's not going to kind of flop off the side of it it's going to stay together as one rigid design and that's one of the things I think has been really really well thought about and it makes the machine stand out in compared to you know some of the um, other SD tape drives or the Arduino based ones or you know there's a lot of different versions out there but they all tend to sit on the side of the machine and you can see there it's directly on a, a Spectrum 128 Plus and it leaves room for the heatsink so it's, it's quite a nice piece of design so here's our Spectrum, our ZX Spectrum with the unit on here attached to the side and um, you can see it kind of really kind of fits as one unit which is it's quite nice it's very nice and it looks as if it was almost designed to be there in the first place so once it's bolted on the legs are up on this Spectrum Plus and it's a rigid design it's not going to fall off it's not going to you know cause you any issues and um, they've even tried to recreate the nice pattern which the Spectrum Plus has down its case so if I tilt it forward you can see the pattern down the case and it generally looks really good with the machine the um, once you screw it onto the back of the case which um, is, this is how you do it and where you screw it on so the normal 5 volt USB lead goes in here which is this grey lead here and this one is my RF oh sorry this is my composite lead here so these two are really just your normal part of your machine and it screws on to the original case here in three places and it's got a reinforcing band here and it's actually shaped to fit the case which is a very nice touch now there are two ways of connecting this unit up there's um, each way uses a basically a audio lead which goes from your spectrum ear 
into the output of the new device okay and um, I've got quite a long lead on here which is why I've kind of just bundled it up a little bit which can be hidden under the machine if you want it really tidy um, but you know you can get a short one or just make one up yourself if you really you know you really wanted to and um, if you were going to leave it permanently attached to the machine I would more most certainly have it underneath the case so it's out of the way the other thing is as I said there's just a 5 volt USB plug here and the, the USB range is around about 3.3 .3 up to 9 volts so it's just a standard USB power charger or charger once you've done that and it's all screwed together that's basically all you do but there are another there's another version out which I've just researched didn't know anything about this one until recently it was there uh, he can supply a Y piece which then takes away this so that becomes a standard spectrum plug basically a little um, 9 volt plug and um, they're, they're literally looped like this so if you hold these two wires together that would be your little loop of wire instead of your USB charger so you know you've got two options it doesn't particularly matter which way if you want a little bit less kind of one less wire on your desk go into a socket then that would be an ideal solution but either way it's not a problem really the the solution with this as it is is very neat and very nice so how does it work well once it's powered on you have a, a small screen here which um is protect you know is like a lot of the other sort of sd drives out of there but you know it's it's right in the center of the unit and the buttons are now neatly positioned down the side which is um is quite smart rather than having them running along the bottom and um, again they are 3d printed and it's a nice it is a glossy finish on this one which is which is quite nice to be honest you know it doesn't have to be a perfect match for the matte finish on here but you know if you really wanted to i'm sure a matte finish could be applied to it but at the end of the day it's a nice finish i like the contrast so it's, it's quite nice between the two units now the buttons are again 3d printed you've got your file select play stop etc and um they are again they feel quite nice as you you can hear there's quite a nice action to it and it's it's nice it feels about right it feels the way you know it should be so it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart or fall off or anything like that it's quite well made and it's um very robust so it feels robust at the moment because you're not going to start throwing these around they're meant to be sat on the side of your machine and used as a a means of loading the the whole unit feels quite robust it hasn't kind of been cost cut to a point where you feel it's going to feel flimsy or break and that's quite nice because you know it's um meant to stay with your machine like this and it's almost certainly going to be a permanent fixture once you've attached it to it and i'm guessing you, you kind of want it to stay nice with the machine as well considering you know there's um the spectrum pluses uh, or any of the uh, sinclair range now are getting old and if you've got a nice one you want to keep it that way so again it's very easy very very easy to use so for example let's say i want to flick down these and let's say i want to select monty on the run well that's all you do and once you've typed load on your computer and it doesn't matter if it's a 48k or a 128k version if you have a plus plus 128 it doesn't matter it'll still load the um the programs in exactly the same way once you found what you need you type load on this on your normal keyboard in your normal way and then press play and once you've pressed play you just sit back and relax and let it load so let's have a quick look and see how it works okay so we have the normal 1982 sinclair research screen and it's just load 
in the normal way. Press enter as you would normally do. There's no any difference at all to this. You get the normal flashing loading screen. And then all you have to do on this is just press the play button. And you can hear it loading in as normal. And again, I've played with this horn for a little while and you know, with these tape drives rather, these SD drives, I've played with a few of them and some of them aren't particularly good. Some aren't reliable enough, some are a little hit and miss. Well this one, as you can see, is loading in quite fine. You can see the counter tick up and it loads very, very well. It looks like the frequencies for this spectrum have actually been accounted for and it seems to work every time. And there we have the dulcet tones of Monty on the run and it works every time. I've tried five or six games of varying quality recordings or kind of downloaded them off the internet, um, copied them from a cassette and um, <laughs> They, they work, they work, they seem to work. Everything seems to work fine on this. So how does it work? Well, it's just an SD system, like a lot of other things now, because it's a micro SD card, which slots in on the front of this machine here, just in that tiny little slot there. And transferring the files, you can use a, a modern PC. It is very simple. I basically let's pick a, a game and we'll just pick one from this file here. So all we do now is is pick a game. So on here I have TZX files, which is this one. Okay, and that's the probably the best file type and the easiest one to get hold of as well. And all you need to do is literally drag it into once it's uncompressed into your SD card, which is down the bottom here. That's all you need to do. Once you've done that, it's ready to go. It's ready to play. But make sure that you, they are uncompressed first, okay? Because, you know, they need to be a proper TZX file, not an image file or a zip file or anything like that. And that's all you do. So you take your library of games that you may have for your Spectrum and transfer it to the SD card okay and that's as easy as it gets and you know there's a lot of um, converters out there for your cassettes which will actually convert them to TZX files as well so that's something that you know if you want to sort of put your own cassette images onto here that that's more than possible but the, the basic premise is is just to pick a file transfer it onto your SD card and that's it. You can even put them in different folders as well on the card. They don't all have to be in a list because by using the play button you can select the folder from your SD drive as well. So there's a, a lot of things you can do. It's very easy to organize your software rather than have a list of A to Z of maybe a couple of hundred games. You can have them listed into arcade or whichever folder you want them listed in and access them on the emulated cassette drive very easily by just using the up and down arrows and the play button to select the files and folders you want. It is that easy to do. And here is a selection of the other drives that they do and um, they are all very well put together. At least the ones I've tried and tested are very well put together. And as I said, it's not something I was looking to do um, to review these or even to make a, a video about it because originally I bought them as the um, solution to my MZ700 basic cassette tape problem because it was getting really iffy to load. So these emulated cassette drives for classic computers such as the ZX Spectrum here are a great way of keeping your software and all of your games and programs all in one place. And as I said, the reason why I wasn't 
really looking to do a piece on these is because I just needed an SD drive. I needed a way of getting the MZ700 basic and um, making it reliable because my cassette tape was failing and um, it's not one of those things that are easily available either. So I thought let's get a drive. So I did a search and I found an MZ700 cassette drive which fitted in the bay where the original cassette tape went and I thought that was a good idea. And that's where it kind of spawned from because what I've done is um, I then got the same and which was a complete accident I didn't even realize when I ordered the next one which is the MSX one um, and it was from the same company I just liked the design I saw a picture of it and I thought that is smart I like that design and you know so I decided to do a review on both of the drives because they in my mind they're very well engineered um, there's a little bit more thinking, creative thinking behind them. And um, I like the way they look and the way they actually sit alongside or sit with your classic microcomputer. And that to me makes the difference. With the MZ700 one, um, which is a review or a video about it, um, you'll find that I liked it because it worked it was more that it worked than where it sat in the machine. It worked because the frequencies that it used are very, very hard to use, especially if you use an external tape drives on an MZ700. Most of them don't work. Software on them from one tape to the internal drive to the external drive and so on don't work. You can take one from an external drive which works, put it on the internal drive and it won't work and vice versa. So this was a really good solution and that's the reason I bought this one um, for the MZ700 and the reason I bought the original one for the MSX computer which is this one here is mainly because there's not a lot around for the MSX in you know choice wise it's, it's always you have to download the firmware, flash it and so on. Um, whereas this was ready to go, it was ready to run and it looked good. And that's where I'm coming from. You can see on the screen behind you there's quite a number of different models and um, they're covering a few different machines which is um, nice to see. It's nice to find that these machines are having equipment built for them now. It's nice to see that people are still developing for these machines now because some of them are just on 40 years old um, and some of the early Texas Instruments machines are even older than that. Support people who are trying to keep these machines alive whether they're recreating the machines entirely or they're rec recreating the software on the machines or their operating system to run on modern machines or whether they're re inventing and not recreating hardware to make our lives better for users of these machines and we really need to sort of rally around and support people like this because going forward we need a user base for these machines and if we start not supporting people or small industries or cottage industries as you might put them as they did when the software industry started um, then we're going to lose a lot of these machines and the functionality of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you'll click the subscribe button because there's more content coming out and I hope to be doing more reviews of hardware and software for these machines. I hope you've enjoyed this um, and I hope you'll subscribe because I want to do more hardware and software related videos for these machines, especially new stuff or new things that are coming out for them. And um, I'll give as an honest an opinion as I can of the um, hardware and software or whatever I'm looking at. And um, I hope you'll come with me on this journey. Okay, so thanks a lot. Thank you.